They say it's good for trucks when they when they gear oh, it down. Trucks? Yeah, it really works well for power, but it doesn't work for speed. Yeah, it's a long stroke. What is it, 305? 305, the old rugged cross. Amen. It's good to be saved. Amen. Praise God. Can we get into the meat now tonight? Yeah. Amen. Like I said, it's good to be saved. It's good to know the Lord. Remember your old ways, get back to Calvary. Amen. And that deferred. All the hills far away.
next thing's glorification, right? Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Thanks, God. It is. Love it. Amen. All right. Um, got to watch. He'll try and throw me off, man, like he did that one day. <laughs> what? Where are we at now? <laughs> it's funny, though, how you can pick up stuff in hymns that after you've learned yeah. things, you know, and how you can put it, put it together. It you know, like, see, you're, you're saved, you're pardoned, and then you're sanctified, you're set apart. See? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Next thing, see, so you got your justification, <clears throat> and you got your sanctification. Amen. <clears throat> Song of Solomon, chapter 3. I remember, my turn. <laughs> I remember um, when, when, uh, when Brother Larry and his wife first came in. You remember how giddy he was? You remember He's that first giddy. first few sets? You remember that first few sermons I preached and he was he, he was telling he was ruining my uh, punchlines? Oh. <laughs> 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 Amen. That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> you notice how I did never forgot that. I was gonna tell you about the squeak the wheel gets the grease when you was preaching this morning, but I didn't I didn't drunk yet. I was saying the same, the same uh, kind of uh, <laughs> Similarity. <laughs> the wheel gets the grease, right? Amen. Pride of the Lord. Amen. I'll tell you what. Um, you know what I really enjoy? We got some people, they, they just come for the hour, you know, that sermon. And I get to talk to them sometimes during the week and everything and realize how much they're learning. Amen. Even just on one hour. Yeah. Right. How much they're learning, you know, and how much more they know God today than they ever knew Him. People sit in churches for years and just confused. It's just confusing. You know, they're so worried in church. We're not worried about if somebody's going to speak in this and do this and somebody's going to touch somebody or whatever. It's make weird stuff and, and and it's dried up junk. It's like it's like a famine. And you get no joy, nothing out of it. It's nothing. It's just a, a hyped up momentum. Yeah. It doesn't go anywhere. But when you get that real word of God and it comes out and you start to learn that Bible and it, God re starts revealing to you, your eyes get opened up and you realize the joy that's behind you. Yeah, amen. 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 Imagine going to sleep at night and you're actually got some you got some calmness to you. Young people, believe me, it's wasted on the youth. Because then they get older and you know you don't sleep as well. You got a crick here, you got a crick there, back hurts here, head hurts here. It's not as easy to sleep anymore. But when they're young, man, they can sleep and it, get get that good sleep from the Lord. Amen. Yeah, right? Amen. Yeah, amen. It's good stuff. Hoorah. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's look at Song of Solomon, chapter 3, and uh, in chapter uh, 1 and 2, and uh, he said in the chapter 2, I am the Rose of Sharon. He set it up for uh, those things, and it's an intimate love affair. Uh, the declaration, I am the rose of Sharon, the lily of the valleys. Uh, that, that statement is, a, is an incredible uh, statement that just rings out. I am the rose of Sharon. I am, that's why. When he says I am, you know. Um, he, this, is a, this is that intimacy. Last week, uh, I, I hope I can preach as good as last week. Last week was, a, was one of them... Um, uh, high road type things, you know, where you're way up and you preach and it's just there and you learn things and you see that uh, uh, there's no, right now there's no problem. It, the bride knows who she is. I'm black. I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I'm black underneath. I got sin. Okay? I got sin. It's in my flesh and that, therefore I'm black. But you have to lift the veil to see it. The only one lifting the veil is Jesus Christ. What I say is keep your veil down. Amen. Keep your veil down. You know, we have a tendency to want to tell people about our sins. What are you telling that for? God ain't telling anybody. Why are you telling everybody? Right. Amen. I don't know how many times I've been out witnessing to somebody and they just happen to be Roman Catholic and I'll witness them and they'll get convicted. And as soon as they get convicted, instead of professing the Lord, instead of confessing the Lord's name, they start confessing their sins to me and I'm saying, stop, stop, stop. I'm a man just like you. Just a man. Don't ever, uh, I always think that a guy, 
Uh, anybody who wants to hear the sins of a young girl is a pervert. Amen. I mean, think about it. She comes in there, a girl comes in and says, uh, bless me, Father, for I sin or whatever. And I can see the priest behind the thing saying, get, get past that. Give me the juicy stuff. Why? Look who you're dealing with. Yeah. Look at their, look at, you know, you, you ever want to see if, a, if an organization is a good organization or a bad organization? All you have to do is look at the fruit. Look at the babies that come out of it. Mm. If you go over to, to the Roman church, what do you got coming out? You got the Cosa Nostra. You got the Mafia. You got the Knights of Columbus. You got the Masonics. You got all these things that came out of it. Hey, look, there's her babies. Yeah. You got those things that come out of it. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. That's how you know it's it's that bad. Uh, how about all the pedophile priests coming out of it? Yeah. Hmm. You see that a, a Baptist preacher does it. In one one Baptist preacher. It's all over the papers in the, every local paper in the United States. Priests been doing it for years. You got twenty thousand of them. 20,000 or so of them. How much are you hearing about that? Nothing. It's right. up for about two seconds on the news and torn down. They're paying millions of dollars for what they're doing, what's happening. And that isn't even a pit. That's all they got caught with. This has been going on for years, people. Right. That's the only, uh, you know, when you get a guy who's three times been caught. He's a child molester. He's been caught three times, and he, he's only on 10 years probation. He should be killed. You know why he's not killed? You better start looking at the judge. Why? Because when the judge ain't putting harsh sentences to harsh things, he's probably guilty of them himself. Amen! Amen! That's how you have to look at it. Why? The Bible tells you they're numbed down. Why? They're a bunch of molesters themselves. That's why they don't... They don't turn around and put harsh time to drinkers that go out and kill people with their cars. Seven DWIs, a guy's still driving. Why is that? Because the judge is a drunk. That's why. Amen! Preach it, preacher! Yes! <laughs> Get the judge in here! I can't hear you. Preach it louder. <laughs> Get that judge and Get him in here! The preacher needs to tell him. And he needs to hear it. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Chapter 3. Back to the love affair. <laughs> Chapter 3. Uh, the Bible says, By night on my bed I sought him, whom my soul loveth. I sought him, but I found him not. I will rise now and go about the streets, the city of the, in the streets. And in the broad ways I will seek him whom my soul loveth. I sought him, but I found him not. The watchmen that go about the city found me, to whom I said, Saw ye him whom my soul loveth? It was but a little that I passed from them. But I found him whom my soul loveth, I held him and would not let him go until I had brought him into my mother's chamber, my mother's house, and into the chamber of her that conceived me. I charge you, all daughters of Jerusalem, by the rows and by the hinds of the field, that ye stir not up nor awake my love until he please. Father, bless thy word today, Lord. Father, we love you. We love you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. So, uh, by night on my bed I sought him. Well, you seek some, why were you sought, seek, searching for him? He should have stayed there. But here's the problem, people. He never left her. She left him. See, that's the problem with the bride. The bride seems to uh, look for ways away from him. And yet, there's a problem. You see, he didn't leave her. She's always left. Just like you. You've got to understand something. God don't leave you. You have a tendency to walk away from him. He's faithful. You're not. You see? And then look in verse number, uh, in the first verse, it says, I sought him, but I found him not. I, I got to tell you something. 
That's an excuse to look at him and say, why, why can't I find him? Where are, it's like looking and saying, God, where are you at? You know how silly your question is? God, where are you at? No, where are you? I sought him, but I cannot find him. Well, let me ask you a question. When did you lose fellowship? Go to first, go to first Kings chapter six. Second Kings, excuse me. Second Kings chapter six. I I sought it, I couldn't find it. See, that's the problem. You sought it, you couldn't find it. The great question is not about looking. You know what the great question is? Why couldn't you find it? 2 Kings chapter 6. And in chapter 6, there's a story in here. And uh, uh, most people uh, call it the story of the uh, swimming axe head. And what happens is Elisha, the sons of the prophet, they said to Elisha in chapter 6, they said, Behold now, uh, where we dwell with is too small, it's too straight, it's too small for us. And they ask permission, and they say, we need a bigger place. And, 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 they, and in verse number 3, he says, what? Be content. Be content. But they said, here's the plan. Go cut, cut some wood down. Go cut some wood. But what happened was, but one was, one was felling a beam. And what happens is, in verse 5, the axe head fell into the water. And he cries, and he says, the last master for his borrow. We lost it. We lost the accent, Sparrow. It's the Lord's accent. And we lost it. And, and look what the man of God says. He said, where it fell. Amen. Where did it fall? Yeah. And, and they showed him the place. And he cut down a stick and he cast it in thither. And the iron did swim. Therefore said he, take it up to thee and put it out and put out his hand and, and took it. You say, well, why, 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 you, why you read that story to me? Where did it fall? Where, where'd you lose the power of the Lord? Hey, I can't find him. Where, where, where'd you lose him? He didn't lose you. Where'd you lose him? And, and you know what he, you know what Elisha said to him? The power that Acts had? Where'd you lose it? Why? You need to go back where you lost fellowship. That's what the problem is. The problem isn't that the bride, he's left the bride. The problem is she left him. And now she's running around looking for him. Can't find him. Why? Go back to where you lost fellowship. It's like asking people around here, where do I find the Lord? Well, I'll tell you. I can tell you a place just like that guy brought victory in that day. What's that? Here's a place that preaches the gospel. You need to be in here. Amen. 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 Where did I lose him? Well, he's right there. Where'd you lose him? He's right here. Right. Lo, I come in the volume of the book. One book. You know what your problem is? You're looking in the wrong book. <laughs> Verse number two, she says, she says, I will arise. I will arise now and go about the city in the streets. Brother Larry, let's get out of New York City and go see if we find the Lord. In the city streets. You see how ridiculous that is? What is he doing? You're looking in the wrong place. Yeah. See, not, don't go to the city, go to the church. You haven't seen, I don't know where to find. Hey, look. Maybe you forgot where you lost fellowship. But you know where you can gain it at. Where? Go to the church with the gatherings. He says, he, what did he say? Where two or, two or three are gathered in what? My name. My name. Why do we gather here? In his name. He's got a glorious name and we're gathered in it. Amen. You want to know where the Lord is? He's right here today. Amen. Well, I can't find him. Why don't you sit down, listen for a while, and if you can't find him that way... You knew you were there. Right. You knew it was willingly that you didn't want to find him. But she said, I went to the city streets and in the broadways. I, 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 wait a second, the broadways. <laughs> is he in the broadways? Or is he in the narrow way? Narrow way. You see? See how the book? That, hey, wait a second. This is before Jesus said it. <laughs> this is before Jesus said it. He's in the narrow area. The narrow road. He's in the broadways. I will seek him whom my soul loveth. And your soul does love him. He says, I, I, I sought him. 
But I found him not. You're looking in the wrong place. Verse number 3. The watchmen that go about the city, they found me. To whom I said, Saw ye him whom my soul loveth? It was a little while that I passed from them, but I found him whom my soul loveth. I held him and would not let him go, and, but there's a, there's a clause there. I didn't want to leave him go until I had brought him into my mother's house and into the chamber of her that conceived me. Now, my mother's house is referred as New Jerusalem. So now we see I brought him in to where? My mother's house. Okay? I brought him there into my mother's house and in the chamber of, the, of where I, of, of, uh, into the chamber of her that, that can see me. Our, my mother is New Jerusalem. But look up in verse number three. Remember this part it said the watchman? Now people get all crazy about that. They want to talk about like UFO people or something like that. That's not UFO people at all. Why? Well, it, it's not them it's, and it's not angels. Why? Because they didn't know where he was. Okay? Uh, go over to chapter 5, ahead to chapter 5, and look at uh, verse number 7. In verse number 7, it says, The watchmen, see the same people, the watchmen that, uh, that went about the city found me. And what they do? They smoked me. Were they angels? It wouldn't be angels. It wouldn't be UFO people. It's just people that are out on the street. They're watching. You know, there are lost people that actually know sometimes. Like that guy who brought Victor in that day. We were talking about that. That guy, the guy that brought him in didn't go to church. That guy that brought him in wasn't saved. Well, you know what he knew? He knew they were preaching. Hey, there's a church there that, that preaches out of the Bible, he told him. And he said, you need to go in there. That guy out on the streets knew. You don't understand what's going to happen when that guy even gets to the judgment seat to the great white throne. What's going to happen is God's going to say, you knew where to go. Yeah, you should have been sitting in there yourself. You know, a lot of your family is going to be in front of the Lord, a great white throne. You know what they're going to say? Why did you ask Miss Mary? Well, I thought she was high on herself. She was begging you. No. Mm -hmm. I, I swear, I think most people, the lost people, I swear they think we want their money. Like God wants their money or something. Hey, look, wake up out there. God, I, I don't need your money. He doesn't need any of your money. That's what makes me laugh. We don't even get paid for this stuff. You ever come into a Baptist, a real Baptist church? You ever come into a Bible-believing church? There's not enough people to make a killer. Right. right. I swear they got to be sick in the head to think I want their money. Just because I'm other preachers, they want their money. I don't want their money. I think God wants their soul. Amen. But the watchmen that never they never answered here. Look what he says: the watchmen that go about the about the city found me. To whom I said, saw ye him, my soul loveth? They'd have no answer. Uh, go to uh, Isaiah 56. The next book over. <clears throat> and look at verse, we'll start verse number 9 where it starts the new paragraph and says, All ye beasts of the field, come to devour. Yea, all ye beasts in the forest. His watchmen are what? Blind. blind. Hey, no, you can't see. I was blind, but now I see. Hey, you were blind once, right? So if they're blind, they don't know. They were blind, he says. Uh, his watchmen are blind. They are all what? Ignorant. They are all dumb dogs. They cannot bark, sleeping, lying down, love, loving to slumber. Yea, they are all greedy dogs, which can never have enough. 
and they are shepherds that cannot understand. They're leading people around. They, they don't even understand why. They can't understand the whole thing. They all look to their own way, every one, for his gain from his quarter. Now, do you understand the watchmen? They're lost people. They're lost people. They pick people up off of those things. I went to the watchmen. I went to the busybodies. I went to the people who think they have their ear to the ground. They couldn't tell me about this stuff. Hey, look, they can't. They don't know how to get saved. They're ignorant. They're blind. Verse number four. It was but a little that I passed I passed from them. And, and look, but I found him. But I found him. Like he got away. I, I passed from them. I got away from them, guys. I had to get away. I found him. I, I got to say this. Once you got him, once you're in, don't let him get away. Right. Too many of us have let him get away. We actually have the scars of letting him get away. We have the scars of backsliding in us from letting him get away. What's that? He didn't actually get away. We ran away. We hid from him. We're the bride. And the bride hides from him. And she says, But I found him whom my soul loveth. I held him and would not let him go. I didn't want to leave him go until, until I had brought him into my mother's. Until I brought him to New Jerusalem. And into the chamber of her that conceived me. Now watch the charge. I charge you, O ye daughters of Jer I charge you, Jewish women. I charge you, Jewish people, the Jewish, Jewish, you had him. I charge you by the rows and by the hinds of the field that you stir not up, stir not up, nor awake my love till he please you. Like I said, he doesn't have to wake up until he please. He doesn't have to come in until he please. You know what he's coming when he comes to them? Judgment. How would you like to wake him up for judgment? Look, you, one of the things I've got to tell you, people don't understand. Watch when you're calling for judgment. I'll tell you why. We like to do it. Watch your mouth. You haven't read well. When you start calling for judgment, you have to understand something. If God came back right now, you realize he's coming to judge because he's the judge of the whole earth. Amen. He's got to do the whole thing. If you brought it back, he's got to do the whole thing. What's that mean? We're going to feel it. We're going to feel it. you got to watch what you ask for sometimes. <clears throat> so, oh, daughters of truth, you don't know what you're asking for. You want him to come back, you've got a problem. When he comes back, it's judgment time. He's coming back for judgment, people. Watch what you ask for. Watch what you're asking for says, in verse number 6, the return of the bridegroom comes. He says, Who is this that cometh out of the wilderness like pillars of smoke, perfumed with myrrh and frankincense? You notice there's two of the, two of the um, pieces of equipment that, he, that, that were brought to him, the gifts that were brought to him by, by those wise men. And that's in uh, Matthew chapter 2, verse 11. Okay, uh, go, to, uh, go to Psalm 45. I know a lot of the commentaries usually are put in there that this, uh, when he comes out of the wilderness, that's a look at the second advent. Just so you know. We're looking more of a practical thing at this. Psalm 45. Look down at verse number 6. It says, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. The scepter of thy kingdom is, the, is a right scepter. Thou lovest righteousness and hatest wickedness. Therefore God, thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. Above thy fellows. Uh, I've anointed you with the, with the uh, oil of goodness. That's that perfume myrrh and that frankincense with all powders of the merchant. Okay? Uh, verse number 7, he says, Behold his, his bed. Behold his bed, which is Solomon's. 
Okay, which is Solomon's. Three score valiant men are about it of the valiant of Israel. Uh, there's Solomon's bed, and you got 60 guys all around it. What is that giving him? You know what that's giving him? He's going to have a good rest. You know why? He's got pretty good security around him, doesn't he? 60 men valiant. You notice how it said valiant. That means they got some worth to them. Uh, that's what we, we lack in a lot of times today. We lack a lot of valiant men. Okay? Why do we need valiant men? Because they got to have worth to them. They gotta, hey look man, the world the world's men do not have any worth to them. They don't have any worth, especially today. They don't have any worth today. That's why we're in the situation we're in today with husbands that just walk away. Hey look, the old adage of uh, he just he went out the store to get a loaf of bread. How long ago was that? Five years. Do you know why they say that adage? You know why they say that? Like it's comical? Because that's exactly what people were saying back then. Today it's even worse. They just have babies. They don't even care. It's not even to the point where the baby's there. It's when it's conceived. Goodbye. You know what they are? They're not valiant men today. Right. Like that. Amen. It says, behold his bed. Which And you know the other thing I thought about that bed? He's got valiant men are about it. Uh, if they're carrying it, it's a travel bed. His bed is a travel bed. Amen. It's rest and he can protect, he can protect anyone in it. They all hold swords. Amen. They all hold swords. What's that mean? You have no problem with a side pistol there. But they all hold swords. They're, they're valiant men. Being expert in what? War. Amen. Uh, they all have swords, people. Hey, look. Today in a spiritual sense. Here's what they have, the valiant men. How do you see a valiant man? He's got the right sword. He's got the right sword in his hand to be a valiant man. Every man hath his sword upon his thigh. Why is that? Because of the fear in the night. He says, do your work during the day. Why? The night cometh when no man can see. Now, I understand we put on the lights, but you have to understand, in a spiritual sense, He's saying, do it now. Why? Because if you think you're going to do it in the tribulation, that's a dark time. Guess what? It's not going to happen. Why? First off, you're not here. Second off, it's not the same. They've already gotten preached to a whole bunch of times, and they stiffen the neck. What do you think they're going to do then? You've seen it now. One little scare, and everybody walks away from everything they believed. One little scare. You can't see. It's coming. It's coming, people. It's coming. Amen. I, I will say this. We were passing the test. We're passing the test. Amen. Verse number uh, 9. King Solomon made himself a chariot of wood, of Lebanon. He, it's been provided. It, it's a... Uh, it, he's, it's going to move this chariot. Uh, it's a, a, a weapon of, of pomp and circumstance. It's a weapon of war, too, that vehicle. It's a chariot. And it's, of a, it's strong. Uh, the wood of Lebanon is perpetual. Uh, it, it's, it stands up at, uh, during the most storms and stuff. It stands there. Uh, verse 10, he made pillars thereof of silver. He has a, his pillars, they're, they're of redemption. The bottom thereof, and that redemption, you know what it stands on? His deity. If Christ wasn't God, we're not redeemed. Right. Amen. That's one of the things you have to understand. Why is that? Well, we needed a perfect death. And your preacher, he can't provide it. I can only tell you about it. But I can't provide a perfect death, you see. We needed that perfect death. Amen. He says, he made, the, he made pillars thereof of silver, the bottom thereof of gold, the covering of it of purple royalty, the midst thereof being paved with what? Love. Love. 
with love for the daughters of Jerusalem. He came unto his own. He loved his own. And they received him not. He went to the daughters of Jerusalem. And they received him not. You say, why did he go there? He loved them. To the Jew first. Then to the Gentile. You know, to the, to the house of Israel. Why? I love them with an everlasting love. But thou sayest, when hast thou loved us? They asked. You see, that's how it is. That Bible's right every time. I loved you. And they asked, when did thou lovest us? When did you love us? Are you kidding me? I sent my son down there. And you trampled upon him. And you put him to a cross and you killed him. I sent everything I had. What? I sent my son. He sent prophets, he said. When you read the parable, he sent prophets. He sent people. And they killed them, each one they sent. And then finally he said, I'll send my own son. Purely they'll reverence him. And they sent his own son. And you know what happened? We do not want this man to rule over us, they said. What do you think the father would do? He's going to come in there and trample him out, he says. Amen. Judgment's coming. Verse number 11. Go forth, O ye daughters of Zion. And behold, King Solomon with the crown wherewith his mother crowned him in the day of his espousal. When he, that's Pentecost right there. In the day of his espousal. When's that? It's Pentecost. The church becomes there. It's right there. We're, aren't we to be an espoused virgin? Betrothed. To that one. You see? What's that? That's us. Amen. We're in the Bible in the Old Testament. There we are. Amen. Amen. Go forth, O ye daughters of Zion, and behold, King Solomon, with the crown with, wherewith his mother crowned him, in the day of his espousal, Amen. and in the day of the gladness of his heart. What a day that will be Amen. when my Jesus I shall see. You see, Look, the greatest day to you is the day you got saved. And when you got saved, you met him in three different places, and you didn't even realize it. You know, we all say Calvary, but you never realize something. The gospel was three places. I met him at Calvary when he bled on the cross for me. You know where else I met him? I met him when he was buried. And when he rose again from the dead on the third day. Why? Because that's the account I got. And if he didn't rise from the dead, he's not God. And if he didn't rise from the dead, then he sinned. He's God. He rose from the dead. He was virgin birth. He's God. Amen. I needed God to die for me. Why? No other death would have meant anything. Amen. You see, we got, a, we got the bride, and what happens is... Comes like a daisy. She backslides. She's the one that walks away from the Lord. But you'll always notice something about the Lord. Easy to be found and wooing you back. Amen. You real see that backsliding is can be it can be hurtful to you, and I'll tell you why. And I, I see it, it's you I'm gonna give it to you easy to figure out. It's not 99%. It's 100%. 100% of a backslider does not hear the wooing of the Lord that fast. He doesn't hear the voice and say, I need to get back there to where I left that off at. I need to get back there. The backslider in heart is worried about his own ways. You know what he tries to do first? He thinks he can go further with it. No, I like to take another step with it. Did you ever tempt the Lord... That. What's that? You think you can handle something. I can handle that. I can handle that. Okay? Hey, look. I love when somebody catches me sometimes because the reason why is because I can actually go, thank you, Lord. Amen. Thanks. Why? Well, who do you think caught you? What do you think? It's really the other person? They may draw it out, beat you up or something like that, but let me tell you something. There's a lot of the Lord in that. Take your smack. Amen. He says, 
So, uh, so, he, so she goes away. And you know what the first thing she does? Instead of going where she should go, walking around trying to figure out, oh, I lost the Lord, don't know where to find them. Oh, you know, it's like, how many of you have discussed the church problems with carnal people? Well, we got a problem in our church, let me tell you about it. And you're talking to people who ain't going to church, that they're not even deep. Are you stupid? How are they going to know? I got another question. Do they see the spiritual thing in it? Do they see it? No. Well, you know, that preacher, he was just made and made down there, you know, and they start telling like people that aren't even saved. Oh, let me tell you about the preacher. He wanted me to be to me. Now, what church is going to preach the gospel in town? Right. You're saved, and you're telling people not to go get the gospel. You're the meanest person I know. Yeah. You're mean. You don't discuss church business with anybody outside of our church unless it's to the point, look, you got a problem with me, I'll go away. If I'm doing something that's that bad, I'll go away. I've been, hey, look, people brought things and accusations, that's fine. I've had that before. I'm going to tell you, most of this stuff is funny. Like when you brought that stuff about the UFOs. Oh. That's the stupidest thing I ever heard. That was a, I got to tell you, I actually marked that down because I was like, that's funny. That's the best you got? That's the, well, he said, and you go, they go through the line, you're like, that's the best you got? That's the best. You could have picked anything. You could have picked something heretical. You picked, that was the, what they picked. You see the foolishness. You say, what? Well, I hear it all the time. I hear it from other people. They say things to me. They'll come up and say, well, aren't you the guy that teaches this? And I look at them like they got three heads. Why would I teach that? <laughs> Amen. Crazy stuff, people. What's that? They, they, he says they get, they get messed up, and we go out to the watchman. And we sit there, and we go, what are you? What's this one saying? What's that one saying? What are you taking, a poll? A poll of the unsaved. How's the church? It's bad. Okay, good enough. I'm out. That's basically what you'll get from the watchmen. They're not the right people. You know what God said in Matthew 18? Go right to the source. Go right to the source. I tell you, oh, I got a problem. Where you go? Right to the source. Is that bad? Bring it up from the church. Bring, pick another guy with you next. Is that what he said? First go to the person. Next bring another person. Then turn around, bring it in front of the church if, you, if they won't listen. Okay? That's as easy as easy as five. One, two, three. Easy as pie. The problem is, the first step is never accomplished. Right. The first step is never accomplished. You can sit down and talk about it. Look, I, I give it like this. There's two things. Number one, Jesus is the Christ. Hey, we all there? Mm -hmm. But there's a second one. This is where the divide starts. Big time. Through the Christians. Jesus is the Christ. You know the second thing a Christian needs to know once they're saved? The King James is the Bible. And if you haven't moved them from that one yet, you're wasting your time talking anything else of doctrine or anything else. You've wasted your time. Why? They ain't got the right book. They ain't got the right doctrine. Amen. You're better off not even bringing it up. Why? Because the that's what he, isn't that what Paul said in Corinthians? He said you went down to the world and you started telling people in the world for judgment upon church house. And that's what they were doing in the house in, in the Corinthian church. They're going outside. He says, don't you know you'll judge angels? Don't you know that they, they don't know, they don't have the ability to even think on these things. I've left you with the uh, and told you you're gonna you're gonna be judging high and high and mighty things. You can't even judge something small like that. And then you realize how small minds that we do have. That we're, that's not one of, just so you know, you know you're backslidden when you start that. When you start complaining to other people outside of church about the church. You realize you're backslidden. Why? They can't help you. You're on the wrong source. You're doing everything the Bible told you not to do. Right. I see it too much. I see it too much. I don't see it in here, just so you know. But I do see it. He says, he says uh, uh, in here he's talking about 
you went away, you, you walked by, you, you went to the wrong people to find out. Uh, you should have just went to where you lost fellowship. You could have went back to the church. Not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together as a matter of some sin. What? Ever so the more, he says. You need to get in there ever so the more. You need more of this, not less of it. I need more. Hey, look, I, I, I was going with a one-hour Bible study uh, a, a day. Now I'm up to two. I was going through three uh, this time. Now I'm up even more. I, I used to only read three chapters. Now I'm reading four or five. And, and now we're reading Proverbs. With it. Look, I, you don't need less. Amen. You don't need less. I under, I'm, not, I'm not saying, you know, I want you to understand something. I'm not saying it has to be a routine. It has to be three chapters. There's going to be days when you're not feeling good. There's days, God understands those days. He, he knows, believe me. Uh, okay, I, I can't today. I, you're running all around and it just doesn't come into play. It just doesn't happen. Believe me, God's not sitting there with a stick going, I'm going to get him. You know what he's saying? He woos you and he says, you know, the book's sitting there at the table. The book, you got to have a place you meet the Lord. you got to have a place that you meet the Lord. My wife's place is in our bedroom. She's on her knees. On her, she meets the Lord. Every night, I know exactly, she goes in and she meets the Lord every night about 7 o'clock. Sometimes a little different, but it's usually about 7. She knows where I meet the Lord. I meet the Lord every night after dinner when I'm done everything and I put the chickens in. And that's it for the night. I come back in and know where I meet the Lord at? I meet the Lord at that table right there. I have my book on that table. It's time to study. And I have my time with the Lord. And it's my time by myself with the Lord. And He talks to me. And I listen. I'm there to listen for a while. Study and listen to Him. Amen. It's I always say it like this. It's my study time, but I really should be saying it's our time. Amen. It's our time. I need some time. You gotta give the other person look, I know you're married, but you gotta give the other person some time with the Lord by themselves. You just have to. I know you want to be together. I know it's very big for a woman. We need to be together and everything else. Yes. But you also need your time alone. And he needs his time alone with the Lord. And the reason why is because there's things the Lord's going to talk to him about. You can't hear. There's things that happen I don't tell my wife. I, I, I always say there's dirty business. And sometimes there's dirty things that happen. I'm not saying dirty, underhanded. What I'm saying is, there's a lot of dirt sometimes you'll find out in the church house. Not everybody needs to know. Amen. Nobody, any, uh, don't, don't worry, it'll be on Facebook tonight. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. So, for the first time, for the first time in this chapter, <clears throat> they were separated. For the first time, she couldn't see, she couldn't see the Lord. She had to sought for the Lord, but couldn't find Him. That's the thing. I found him not. I found him not. For the first time, there was a separation between them. What's that? That's you. That's your walk. This is all about you in here. And guess what? She found him. Why? Went to the right place for one. Number two, it wasn't because of her she found him. It was because of him. He's the wooer. She's not. Amen. Amen and amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for our chapter here. Thank you, Lord God, for teaching us. This has been a hard spiritual session, Lord Father. I just pray, Lord Father, and thank you for all the things we have accomplished. Thank you for the meal today, Lord Father. Thank you for our people who are learning. Lord God, That, uh, Lord, I want to thank you. I was listening in uh, when everybody was eating. And I was hearing your name being mentioned. And I was hearing them talk about you and the Bible and everything else. And Lord, we weren't talking about the food. We were talking about the real food. And I want to thank you, Lord, for our people who recognize what that real food is, that spiritual food that we need, which is called thy word. I thank you, Lord, I was able, actually able to, to, to listen as people spoke about you in reverence and how you've changed their lives. I thank you, Lord, for changing our lives. And I thank you, Lord, for this, this chapter to know that, yes, we get separated. But we, know, we do know where to find you. We do know where to find you. And I thank you for that, Lord. Our hearts need to be uh, 
set towards thee that we won't lose you. We hold on to you like she said. Held on. Let's hold on tight. Thank you, Lord, for being faithful that we always know where, the, where, where you're at. We love you, Lord. 